We are joined this afternoon by a very special guest. Greatness and humility in the Jewish tradition are not incompatible. They complement one another. For a man to be humble, he does not have to be someone who has plenty to be humble about. The greater the man, the more humble he is likely to be. The Torah is compared to water. For just as water only runs downhill, never uphill, wisdom can only be attained through a humble heart. Perhaps more than any individual in public life, past or present, Erwin Kotler exemplifies a unique melding of intellect and compassion, of heart and mind, of greatness and humility. International human rights lawyer, counsel to prisoners of conscience, peace activist, member of parliament, former minister of justice and attorney general, constitutional and comparative law scholar, and most significant to me, teacher and professor. I was first privileged to personally experience both this man's deep heart and mind while a law student at McGill, where he was an esteemed professor. This was back in the early 1990s and I was presenting a mock appeal. As chance would have it, Professor Kotler was one of the three individuals listening to the presentation. Needless to say, these things can be a stressful event in the life of a law student. When I finished my presentation, Professor Kotler, in that measured tone of voice and reasoned manner we have all come to know and respect over the years, thanked me for my presentation, commended me for what I had done well, and gently listed ten things I could have done better. <laughs> each, each point interrelated and building upon the other. I was in shock and awe. <laughs> More importantly, I walked out thinking that this is an individual I could learn from, and not just about the law. I asked if I could follow up with him to learn in greater detail how I might have done better, and characteristically he said yes. I ended up taking a number of his courses and working for him as a researcher in the summer. It was an invaluable mentorship. And while I no longer see him on a regular basis, to this day he has had an enormous impact on the way I look at the world and the decisions I make. I often think, how would Professor Kotler react in this case? What might he do in this scenario? Professor Kotler teaches us, as his parents taught him as a child, that the pursuit of justice is equal to all of the other commandments combined. And it was in this vein that he got deeply involved in two of the great human rights struggles of the second half of the 20th century. That is, the struggle for Soviet Jewry and the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. And as we all know, these struggles were successfully overcome. Professor Kotler's advocacy, including the campaign to mobilize shame against oppressive regimes in the former Soviet Union and South Africa, helped secure the freedom of such heroic icons as Nelson Mandela and Natan Sharansky. Professor Kotler's advocacy for peace and human rights is as strong today as it ever was. Sadly, for example, there are still plenty of political prisoners <coughs> being detained all over the world wrongfully for simply exercising freedoms we often take for granted, including the freedom of expression. Professor Kotler gives these heroes voice and he gives them hope. Whether it has been transforming the Supreme Court of Canada into the most gender representative Supreme Court in the world in its capacity as Minister of Justice and Attorney General, or quashing more wrongful convictions in a single year than any prior minister, whether it has been combating anti-Semitism and the dangers of mass atrocity, standing up for Israel, advocating for peace in the Middle East and in fact across the globe, or advocating on behalf of the dispossessed anywhere in the world, his voice has been strong and has been heard. <coughs> Professor Kotler reminds us of our duty to speak and to act out against racism, against hate, against anti-Semitism, against injustice, against, as he puts it, the crime whose name we should shudder to mention, namely genocide. Particularly poignant since it was Holocaust Remembrance Day just this past week. All in the pursuit of that inspirational dream that Erwin Kotler embodies for us, and that is the pursuit of justice. Professor Kotler once taught me, if I ever wonder what I can do in a world that often makes us feel cynical or even indifferent, to think about the words of the great sage Maimonides, who suggested we look at the world as if it were half good and half evil. Then one good deed by any of us, as I tell my children, it might be helping a friend with homework, 
It might be helping an elderly person across the street. It might be calling a grandparent to say hi. One good deed could tip the scale from evil to good. And so as we learn from the good professor that each and every one of us has a cosmic opportunity to repair the human condition and as he has done with so many good deeds, transform history. <coughs> Professor Kotler really transcends politics. He is in many ways the conscience of a nation. And despite all of his accomplishments, he remains an individual who displays profound humility. I give you a great good man and a good friend and teacher, Erwin Kotler. Thank you, Jay. I, I have to say that, that my, well, it's been the most humbling introduction that I, I have ever uh, received. It means so much when, for me, the most important thing you said about what I'm doing was being a law professor. <coughs> and to have the validation from a former student, uh, and I see other former students here, is more than any professor or person could wish for. So I want to thank you and Renee for <laughs> opening up your home and your hearts and bringing us all uh, together here today. And I